We just made this no tools DIY front porch welcome sign that's fall themed and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, Bill, to make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're heading back gnome with some new fall front porch decor designs. Yes, we've been working on our fall designs and we have this new gnome fall front porch leaner and I'm really excited about it. Now we have to make a bunch of these to take to the craft shows. We think it's gonna be a good seller, but... But Brad is injured, he's on the disabled list. <laughs> One of the kids borrowed the nail gun and brought it back broken. He uh, doesn't shoot his shot anymore. So we're gonna try this with liquid nails instead. Yes, we've done a no tools before, but we're excited to show you how we can build these with no tools. Well, none of your tools. Right, none of your tools. And only three cuts. Yeah, only three cuts. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed two six foot tall dog-eared fence pickets. We went to our local home improvement store where, can, I, where I creepily followed Kim with the camera. <laughs> you can find these pickets in the garden center. Uh, you think they're over by lumber, but they're not. They're out here at the garden center. And there's two types of pickets here. So I thought I would show you because we get lots of questions. There's one that's a little cheaper with a much rougher surface. Do you see how grainy this is? You would need to sand it this or plane it in order to paint it. But then there are these others that are a little bit uh, more pricey, but they're the premium pickets and they're a much smoother finish and we don't sand or prep them in any way. We just go ahead and paint or sand them. Yeah, they're like a baby's bottom. You can see that a lot of them are warped and you can tell they're warped. A lot of them are still wet. So we like to lay them out in the aisle and find which ones are actually flat and not warped or bowed. You can definitely see them. And these are the Gothic pickets. We use these, this is where the three cuts come in. We cut these into three 11 inch sections. These are the braces that go on the bottom, top, and in the middle. Try to keep it from warping. And then I found this Gorilla construction adhesive. Uh, it says it holds in 30 seconds. It's all weather, paintable, and it holds something like 50 pounds or something. So I totally think this will work, but I think we need more. So I grabbed the bigger tube. We had to lay the pickets out in the warehouse so they dry up. I didn't want to try painting them or gluing them while they were still so moist. And we wanted to keep them flat so they don't warp while drying. And you're gonna need the little vertical gnome kit. So little <laughs> is not little. It is, well, it is huge. This happens to be our biggest kit ever. There are three stacked gnomes, yeah. and this is just one of them. <laughs> right? It's going to look like three gnomes in a coat. But they're big, easy pieces to paint and assemble. We offer the optional paint kit to go with it. You can find it in our store at kngmakeit.com. We'll leave the link down below. Step two, we're going to make all of our cuts. We're going to cut this gothic picket into three 11 inch pieces. You can cut your Gothic picket right at the home improvement store. You can take it over the trim section and use the handsaw to cut the three pieces. Or, or you can do it like this employee right here who is very insistent that he does it all the time on the panel saw. So we let him do it and it worked. And they cut it for us. Yeah. Step three, time to assemble. We're gonna use that Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. Say that three times fast. And we're gonna glue these pickets down to the other pickets. So this first picket is just a spacer. We're gonna add the construction adhesive on the back of the second picket. You wanna add this in a zigzag motion. And we're just gonna flip it and press it. We're gonna take that spacing picket and put it down the other end. We're gonna do the same thing down here. We're gonna space it one picket from the bottom. We'll come in with a zigzag motion. I really want to do spirals, but Kim insisted that we stick with zigzags. That's what it said on the package. Just gonna press it into place, squeeze it pretty tight, and we'll move on to doing the middle spacer. The middle spacer, I'm just gonna kinda of eye up what I think is the middle or where it's bowed the most and attach those two there. 
Yes, if your pickets have any bow to it, you'll want to put this brace, the center brace, near that bow section to kind of keep that thing from bowing any further and straighten them out a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit extra adhesive here on this one, only because it's concave and I hope this will fill the gaps. We're going to set some heavy paint jars on here. After about 30 minutes, I really couldn't move the pickets with my hand. They're pretty, pretty stuck. And full cure time is 24 hours. Step four, time to stain. We're going to stain our pickets. You can paint or stain them. We're going to be using this Varathane's Briar Smoke to stain ours. It's my favorite stain <laughs> that color. That is her go-to. And if you haven't heard me say it before, I'm just going to say one more time how great these stain pads are. This is a terry cloth stain pad over foam, I guess. I'm not really sure what's inside, but it really does hold the stain. And I can do a whole picket with just one little dab. Like little... a couple of tablespoons. <laughs> Once the sponge is fully soaked, yes. And then I can put the sponge back in a baggie and save it for next time. So I can do lots of sets of pickets with this one sponge. Also, you see I am using some gloves here. So we typically use rubber gloves, but um, a while back we got these, what are these, uh, dipped gloves? Yeah. And so the bottom half where my hands are holding the stinging pad um, is waterproof, so we're not, yeah. So the stain isn't coming through and I can reuse these because once I finish staining with the stain pad, I'll come back. We just use paper towels to wipe them down and it also wipes the stain off the gloves. I can take the gloves off, set them aside and reuse them for the next set as well. Those disposable gloves got really expensive really quick. Yeah, well, we do so many and we do it so often because we also stain rounds. It's great to be able to use these little a little extra saving the environment. <laughs> they don't make your hands as sweaty. <laughs> True, they do breathe on top. Step five. Time to paint. And decorate. And I hate painting, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't mind painting, especially these pieces because they're so large, they're easy to paint. I mean, that's like a full-size beard. I would win beard contests if I actually had this beard. <laughs> Here's the full kit. You want to make sure you have all of your pieces. We're going to group our pieces and paint them one gnome and one gnome at a time. <laughs> yes. One gnome at a time. You see here we're using blue painter's tape. Uh, the pieces in the middle here are flipped upside down. So they're sticky side up and you see I have them taped at the top and the bottom. This will hold our pieces while we roll them so that they don't move as you roll over them. We're using all of our fun fall colors, our oranges, our greens, our browns. Here we're mixing colors for skin tones. We got asked about this earlier this week. How did we do this? This is how we do it. We mix a little yellow, a little white, and now we have a good skin tone color for his nose. A Little bit of this, a little bit of that. You kind of just mix it until it looks right. And this is our second gnome. He's holding an acorn. Here you can see we're using those foam rollers and the small four inch roller handles. By using the foam rollers here, we can reuse them for our next project. In this case, for our next set, because we'll be painting a bunch of these. The trick here with the foam rollers is to make sure you only have a little bit of paint on the roller. You can see I use the paper plate and then I, I dip it in the paint and then roll the roller on the plate to make sure I get even coverage across the roller. And then I use a really light hand as I paint the pieces. You don't want to push too hard because the paint will ooze out of the foam roller. Now I like to squeeze the paint directly on like the beard and kind of just use the roller. But you have to be a professional, which Garrett is not for this because he tends to use too much paint and then your roller is soaked full of paint. One coat, Kim, one coat. <laughs> no, no. Light, multiple light coats are best. I say go big or go no. And here 
is our third gnome, our top gnome. He's got a full hat and he's holding the leaf. Again, we're using our foam rollers. Garrett's putting too much paint on this beard. And I'm putting a, a light coats on each of our pieces. Again, you know, they'll dry quickly. They'll dry in just a few minutes. And then you can come right back with the second coat. Now mine might take a little longer to dry, but I can do other things while it's drying. Well, then it leaves, it's a little bit streaky. So and here you can see when I picked up the white roller, it was so full of paint, it was actually heavy. So you'll see I roll off in the plate. I'm not actually dipping this in any paint. It has so much paint on the roller that I'm actually taking off paint by rolling it onto the plate <laughs> so that I'm putting a light coat on the letters first coat you can see i just laid the roller down in the baggie because i'm coming back to do a second coat just think about it like cost cutting it was like it was pre-painted roller for you <laughs> it, it definitely was step six time to assemble all the gnomes we're gonna bring it on gnome by gluing all the little bases down to the pickets using this uh gorilla construction adhesive Okay, we always start with a, what we call our dry fit. We lay all the pieces out, we make sure we know where they're going, we have the proper placement and the proper spacing. And it actually fits on the board. True. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big one. And like Garrett said, he's using the construction adhesive and we're gonna assemble from the bottom up. You see, we just move them up a little bit and we use almost all of our kits, we glue bottom up. Yep, we're gonna start with the big beard with his little feet. We're gonna attach his hat. Then the next beard for gnome number two. Then we'll try to slide in his little feet. Then we'll get the gnome number two's hat glued down. We'll glue down the beard of gnome number three. We'll slide in his little shoes, his little feet. Finally, we'll glue his hat down. And I'm not using any zigzag patterns here. I am just drawing shapes with the glue. <laughs> She's playing Kim with is it. Kim furious. <laughs> <laughs> but I did find that with the letters, it was easier to just put a little dab of glue about every half inch or so than to try to run a bead of this glue around each letter. And that's a good tip for all of our kits, whether you're using the construction adhesive or the star bond, little glue dots work great. And then with this, because the construction adhesive is this thicker white color, it does dry white so you'll want to keep it thin and inside the gotta, actual mdf yeah, so it doesn't ooze ins. out that's right watch the ooze now we're coming back and we're going to add all of the top pieces his hands what he's holding his nose and for these pieces we know that star bond our star bond thick works the best it definitely holds mdf to mdf for a very long time for the star bond thick I'll run it around the frame like I'm doing here on the pumpkin, and then I'll quickly flip it over. Gotta be quick though, because if it drips and if it dripped on the beard, it's over. And then we'll just add all of the insert pieces into the frames. The great thing about having a frame around some of these pieces, you don't have to worry about how, if you got any paint on the edges, those edges can... They can stay sloppy. <laughs> yeah. Right, those edges, Garrett can paint. <laughs> Here we're doing this again on the acorn. Um, the great thing about this again is that you have this frame here and you want to flip that over quickly, add your glue on the insides, and then you just slide your pieces in like a puzzle. For the hands, we're just going to glue them to the actual like little acorn or pumpkin or the leaf. I don't think he actually needs arms. Nobody will see them. <laughs> Some of our other kits, we have interchangeable accents, but this is actually a fall kit. So his hands can be glued right directly to the accent pieces. And then the accent piece, it gets glued directly to the beard.
sweet no Alabama. That thing is looking hot. It definitely feels fall. But these gnomes are gigantic. They're, they're big because this is a six foot picket, but I think it looks great. I think it's so cute. It's one of the cutest kits we've ever made. <laughs> it is definitely the biggest kit we've ever made. <laughs> but yeah, I like it. I definitely think it's cute. And I definitely give a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. Love interacting with you guys. And I love sharing all of our files with you. I'll put this little gem up there <laughs> on, on Patreon in a little bit. And then you can take this sucker right on Gnome with you. All right, we are about out of time. So if you're not gonna join us for the Patreon after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Oh, and don't forget uh, for, oh, and don't forget about Test Cut Tuesdays where we try out new files and we paint them live. We'll Every Tuesday we have a we'll new file. We'll see how it goes. And we'll see how this one goes. I got a squat. Gotta get my squats in at the same time. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. Great job. Ooh, ooh, Great ooh, job. Ooh. Ooh.